I did that. Huh. Do you want me to stop recording, Ian? And you do it? There it is. No, thank you. That's You're welcome. All right. So we are recording now. Okay. Would you like to bring Mike Schubert over for us? I'm looking for him. There he is. And Rich is there too. And Rich. There we go. Okay. All right. Mark, we are recording and we have attendees on the line. So I think we can start the meeting. I agree. You're still in presentation mode. Well, not in presentation mode. There you there go. You go. And how's that? Great. Okay. Mark, do you want to start off tonight and then uh, the engineering staff will jump in? Sure. Thank you. As in start now? Yes. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining the uh, the meeting to talk about the reconstruction of uh, Bank Street and work on the Nassau Street seascape. Streetscape. Ah, sorry. Uh, anyway, we're going to hear some information, share some information with you. We ask that everybody keep it calm and respectful. Everybody's trying to work together. So uh, anyway, that's enough from me. Thanks again for being here. Deanna, you and whoever, jump in. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so tonight's agenda um, is laid out on the slide how we will handle the meeting. Uh, first, we'll go through the introductions of the project team as well as the contractor. And then we'll give you an overview of our construction project as well as um, various impacts and mitigation measures that we are taking to lessen the pain of construction in your neighborhood. And then we will um, take time at the end of the meeting to do a question and answer period. You'll notice that there is the ability to type in um, questions through the chat and we'll be monitoring that. And um, if we don't get to your answers during the presentation, uh, we will follow up at the end. Next slide. Okay, so um, the team that is here tonight with us is um, from the engineering department. Myself, I'm Deanna Stockton. I'm the municipal engineer. Uh, we've got a lot of new faces that you may not have seen in the past. Um, Andrew Philippi is our sewer engineer. Ian Baker is our construction engineer and will be the project manager during construction. Tiffany Smith and Rich Decker are two construction inspectors and they will be on site while construction is taking place. Um, Tiffany has also was also the inspector during the New Jersey American water main replacement project. So she may be a familiar face to you. Uh, also joining us tonight is Taylor Saputer, our municipal arborist, and we have patrolman Mike Schubert from the police department, if you have any uh, police related questions. Also joining us is Bill Mead, the project manager for Earl Construction, and he has um, a project engineer that will be involved in the project is JC Marukas. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn over the presentation to Ian and Tiffany and Bill, and they'll walk you through the project and the um, impacts of construction as well as our mitigation measures. Good evening, everyone. Um, so we're going to start off with the project overview. Um, as residents, you all understand the characteristics of the site and area, um, but we wanted to highlight some items that we are gonna to refer to throughout the presentation. Um, 
I guess we've got a total of 36 residential units on Bank Street. And we also have businesses on the southern end of Bank Street. Uh, the project's going to be addressed in sections. Um, specifically, we have the Chambers and Holefish intersection. Um, we've got the, the dog leg turn on Bank Street and the Nassau, uh, Nassau Street and Bank Street intersection uh, acting as the delineations. Um, you're gonna hear us refer to the sections in between each one of these points throughout the presentation. This project provides for roadway improvements of Bank Street between Nassau Street and Chamber Street. Uh, the work will also include improvements to the sidewalk area along Nassau Street from Byard Lane, uh, State Highway 206 to the east side of Bank Street. Uh, the principal items of work are gonna include sanitary sewer main and lateral replacements um, from Nassau Street to the dog leg turn. Uh, the storm sewer drainage improvements, including connection to roof downspouts. Uh, we're going to be installing granite curb from Nassau to the dog leg turn, and then concrete curb from the dog leg turn to Chamber Street. The sidewalk and curb ramp construction uh, is going to occur throughout the project. Uh, the ramps are going to be installed on Chamber Street and up at the southern end of Bank Street. Um, we also, the last, one of the last items that we're gonna be addressing is the pavement reconstruction. Um, we also have some tree removal and planting and some other small miscellaneous work. As far as Nassau Street, we will be replacing the sidewalk. And we also uh, anticipate PSENG to be performing some gas main and service replacements. Um, as you're all aware, NJ American Water did their water main and service replacement back in the summer of 2019. This is the uh, proposed schedule. We are looking to start with our sanitary sewer activities on Monday, February 1st. And you can see we've, uh, we've got a little note there about weather permitting. We might be getting some snow on Sunday night. So um, if they're not starting on Monday, we would be starting potentially Wednesday or the following Monday, depending on how severe the storm is. Um, following the sanitary sewer work, we will be doing the storm sewer work. Um, you can see at the front end of the project, we're doing a lot of the underground stuff. We will be starting uh, on both of these activities. We're gonna be starting at Chamber Street, uh, the Chamber Street intersection and working uphill to Nassau Street. Um, beginning mid-March through mid-April um, will be the concrete work on Nassau Street. And immediately after, we'll be rolling into the concrete work on Bank Street. Um, the last item that we will be doing is the asphalt paving on Bank Street, hopefully, and weather permitting in uh, mid to late May. Um, we do have a little bit of uh, buffer between what we're hoping where we're hoping to finish and our absolute deadline. Um, I believe Earl is uh, confident that we can do this and they want to get it done and get it done fast just as much as you do. Um, the schedule doesn't include the PSENG gas replacement work. Um, they did just notify us that they're going to be doing these uprates um, last week, I believe, or earlier this week. Uh, we're going to jump into some of the tree related work. I was going to turn it over to Taylor if uh, you wanted to comment. 
So this morning, uh, DPW, our tree crew, uh, we elevated some of the private trees that overhang the site in order to clear uh, for the larger trucks and construction vehicles that's going to be on the street. Um, Earl, their subcontractor, will be removing um, the trees and stumps that are currently on um, that tree, as well as the red oak on top on uh, Nassau. Um, once that is removed, uh, Bill, I mean, you'll be giving me a schedule when your contractor will be coming on site for notification purposes. Um, once the project is complete, uh, two new trees in front of the back street parking lot will be installed. So on these plans, you can kind of see we denoted some of the tree removals. Um, I'm going to flip back and forth. This is you got Nassau Street uh, on the left edge of your screen. Um, you can see one we're replacing, removing and replacing. We're planting two new trees near the Gund building parking lot. And then we have some removals along this stretch as well. After the dog leg turn, we've got two more trees that are um, growing right next to the existing curb that we're going to have to remove. And this is up on Nassau Street. And we have two additional ones that are being removed and replanted. So I was hoping, Andrew, if you uh, wanted to go over the sanitary sewer work details. Sure thing. So uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to be starting on the north end of Bank Street, um, working in, I believe, 50 foot sections, uh, digging, replacing the sewer main as they encounter a sanitary lateral. They'll also be replacing the lateral uh, when they're in that 50 foot stretch. Um, <clears throat> when there are homes with uh, only a single lateral serving a double home, they're going to be adding in a stub for future connection to uh, the sanitary sewer for the second portion of the double home. Um, anytime that the work will be affecting the service for a particular structure, uh, Earl is going to be contacting, notifying uh, the residents there 24 to 48 hours prior, and then as well, the morning of the work, uh, that that service may be interrupted. Uh, and then as soon as the uh, service can go back to normal, that notification will also go out. So you won't be uh, out of service for longer than needed. Um, <clears throat> the sewer pipe will be plugged upstream of the work. So there will be some, uh, I guess, accumulation uh, within the mainline pipe upstream of their work site, but it is anticipated that that will be low and will not affect uh, any of the surrounding homes. Uh, and if there becomes an issue for whatever reason, uh, they'll have bypass pumping equipment nearby that they can use to uh, alleviate any, any concerns. Um, now that said, I mean, it's a very low flow area. There aren't that many connections, uh, but while they're doing work on the sanitary sewer, it would be very helpful for residents to uh, reduce their usage of large water usage appliances like uh, washing machines, uh, taking long showers during the uh, construction time. Um, oh, already said the uh, bypass pumping bit. And uh, 30 or so days after uh, the initial work is complete, there may be um, a number of hours of uh, additional service interruption for uh, testing. And I, I suppose that's it. <laughs> So regarding the storm drainage and other utilities throughout the project limits, um, the storm sewer pipe, 
within the roadway will be replaced from Chamber Street and extend up to number 10 Bank Street. Um, storm laterals will, will extend from the main under the sidewalk in order to connect roof downspouts and sump pumps if we encounter them. Uh, last week, PSENG advised us that the gas main and services are due for replacement. Uh, I already touched on that before. Um, this last this last one's a big one. Um, we're advising residents that there's a five-year moratorium for road openings after our final roadway pavement is installed. If you're planning to make underground utility upgrades, we're recommending that you contact um, the specific uh, service utility provider. Um, we would prefer that they're done. Uh, yeah, we'd prefer that they're done before asphalt paving goes down. Um, we can provide you with contact information for the utility companies if if you need it. Um, let's see. Let's see. As far as the various street improvements, uh, we are going to be installing granite curb from Nassau Street down to the dogleg turn. Um, then we're going to be transitioning to concrete curb from the dogleg to chambers. I touched on that a little earlier. Throughout the project limits, we're going to have tinted gray sidewalks, gray concrete sidewalks, and there will be a small concrete retaining wall adjacent to number 3537 Bank Street. Um, the driveway aprons will also be tinted in gray concrete and uh, adjacent to the sidewalk driveway aprons, um, we will be reconstructing uh, any driveways that are affected by construction to match the existing material. Uh, regarding COVID-19, uh, the municipality and the contractor will be complying with the latest New Jersey and CDC guidelines. Um, EARL has their own COVID-19 safety guidelines, which coincide with Executive Order 192 and with the municipality guidelines as well. Um, the contractor superintendent will be responsible for enforcing these guidelines on site during construction. Regarding access to your homes and the street during construction, um, in our notices, you may have seen that the construction work hours will be from Monday through Friday. Uh, the workday will begin at 8 a.m. and can uh, finish all the way up to 6 p.m. Um, but uh, maybe Bill can correct me if I'm wrong, but a typical work day would wrap up around four. Uh, would you agree with that, Earl? Um, yeah, that, that would be the plan. I mean, six would be, uh, uh, you know, a slight issue would have to come up. Right. That would, uh, that's not typical. Not standard. Yep. Yeah. Um, we also are um, allowing the opportunity to work on Saturday uh, with the municipal engineer's pre-approval, um, but we also, at this time, their schedule doesn't show any work on, on Saturdays. It would be an as needed basis. And of course, we would give the residents adequate heads up and notice in advance. So Bank Street will be closed completely during construction to vehicular traffic. Um, the caveat there is access to emergency vehicles will be maintained at all times for fire police etc. Um, sidewalk access may be closed during construction, but Earl is going to work with um, the residents and the municipality to make sure that everyone can get in and out of their homes throughout the day um, by walking. Um, trenches will be paved at the end of each week. Um, of course, if we are um, expecting foul weather. Um, 
we will pave them in sooner than the end of each week. Um, Earl will also have a road plate on site in case something happens unexpectedly um, so that we can cover up any open excavations, but we expect to excavate during the day and have them filled in at the end of each workday. Uh, for deliveries, which we all heavily depend on, uh, especially during these COVID times, um, I guess we'll start with the uh, garbage. We we understand that it occurs every Tuesday on Bank Street. Uh, we have notified the Mercer County Improvement Authority and Central Jersey Waste about the project. Um, between us and Earl, we are going to encourage and try to continue field communications with any of the, uh, the collection trucks that may be trying to access the, uh, the street. Um, brush and leaf pick up. We've coordinated with DPW and um, if we need to, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, we've got all the dates here and this, uh, this PowerPoint will be posted up on the website in case uh, anybody needs this. Um, we ask that any recycling pickups that are missed, we would ask that you directly report them to Mercer County Improvement Authority and their phone number is on this slide. And we also have important contact information at the end of this presentation. And it's iterated on every one of our um, construction notices as well. Um, for, for your mail and packages and groceries, um, the, it's our understanding that the current mail delivery, uh, they park close to Bank Street and they currently walk the street anyway, um, but we're gonna ensure that they can get mail to your home throughout the day. Um, packages and groceries, they might just have to stop at the end of the, uh, the, close, the closures um, on the Southern and Northern end of Bank Street and just have to walk up packages. And if you do receive grocery deliveries, we'd ask that you could try to time them so that they do occur after that typical construction hour, uh, this ending time for construction hours around four o'clock um, or try to divert them to weekends if possible, of course. I'm gonna turn over the parking accommodations over to Tiffany. Hello, everyone. Um... We have come up with a few parking options to accommodate um, and meet demand uh, for the residents as well as the business um, employees on Nassau Street. So during the work hours, the construction work hours from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, we are allocating um, Trinity Church and also uh, the Trinity Church parking lot and also um, spaces, metered spaces along the northern side of Paul Robeson place between Chambers and Witherspoon. And that would be the side um, directly across from the condominiums. Um, some of you may remember that from the summer of 2019, where we allocated uh, some of those meters for parking. Um, for the businesses that are at Nassau, we have allocated some of the meters as well on Paul Robeson Place, and also uh, eight meters on Mercer Street. We are going to show um, a map of those locations in a second. Um, if you need a parking placard, please email myself, tsmith at princetonnj.gov. Um, I will need some information, including your name, um, the vehicle type, a contact phone number, and your license plate. This information will be given to the Princeton Police Department as well as the parking enforcement. The parking enforcement will be the ones who are there during 
the day and the police will most likely be around during night. So we need to give information to both authorities. Um, residents and business employees must display these parking placards on the driver's side, uh, driver side of their dashboard. Um, this is so that to eliminate getting a ticket, if you do receive a ticket while the parking placard was displayed in your vehicle, please email me and that way I can notify the Princeton Police Department or the parking enforcement. Um, meter bags may be placed on the meters. We will have signs up that mention this is for, you know, Bank Street residents only. Um, that does include the businesses. Um, so if anyone is parking there during construction time or taking up space, you know, they can receive a ticket. Next slide. So here we have the Trinity Church parking lot, which has an entrance and exit on Mercer Street, as well as an exit on Stockton Street. And this is actually located across the street from Monument Hall. Um, they're allowing us to use this space, um, possibly up to 25 parking spaces. We are still uh, making sure, we're still uh, defining the last bit of where exactly in the parking lot residents can park, but there will be signage up for everyone so that when it's time to park, you will know where to go. Next slide. On Paul Robeson Place, you can see there are 17 parking spaces along that stretch. Um, there are also 12 across the street um, if needed. So if it seems that more people are parking on Paul Robeson and we need additional spaces, we can include those if necessary. Next slide. So on Mercer Street, there are, there's, I guess, like a little island across from the businesses 24 Nassau and 610 Nassau. And in front of, I think it's 4 Mercer Street is the address. Um, it, it's a university building. There are eight uh, meters there that will be used for the businesses. Um, this slide is uh, for equipment and material staging. So if in the orange, you'll see we're going to have some contractor equipment. Um, we have a employee parking lot um, off of Bayard Lane. And that's where majority of the contractor's equipment will be uh, parked overnight and on weekends. We're also allotting the a no parking zone as well as two parking spaces on Chambers Street uh, next to eight green home and across from the whole fish parking lot. And there will be some material storage. There may be some material storage on Bank Street. Um, however, I believe the contractor may be using an offsite storage to store some of their material. Uh, one of the residents has also allowed us to use uh, their driveway for temporary storage as well. Bill, could you give us a little bit of an overview of what you think you might be storing on Bank Street? Yeah, um, if anything, it's probably just going to be a couple drainage structures and pipe uh, along the side of the road. But from talking to superintendent, most of it, uh, most of the material is actually going to stand in an offsite staging location about a mile and a half uh, from the site. Uh, only thing, you know, during the day, there'll be material there. So, you know, watch your step, walk, you know, get into your homes via foot. Um, but there should not be material left over uh, overnight on site. 
uh, and almost certainly no stone or debris or things like that. Um, if anything, it would be, you know, smaller fittings or pipe or things like that. They, they also have a box truck for any smaller things that they'll be storing. Uh, probably, actually, I think they may even take that home. If not, it'll be stored up on Chamber Street in those two parking spots. So. Okay. Will you be street, uh, sweeping the street every night? Not every night. Uh, I, I believe they have a broom attachment. So if there's um, areas that need attention, they can get small areas. We will absolutely hit it every week um, with the full broom. But I, I believe they have the broom attachment. Just not, that wouldn't be able to get the whole street. But yeah, for, for certain areas, of course, they'll keep it neat, you know, even if it's handwork. Thank you. Like um, Andrew had said, we're not taking up, you know, especially we're, stick strictly on sanitary sewer for now but um you know we're going 50 feet at a time so there's not going to be a substantial amount of disturbance in a given day um, nothing that that crew can't handle by hand if it's really a mess so. for some of the special concerns that we anticipate um the idling of construction vehicles was a small concern um back when NJ American Water was doing their work. Uh, I spoke to Bill earlier. We are gonna to try to keep idling down to a minimum. Um, some of the equipment, it, it is weather dependent. Uh, they do need to warm up in the mornings, if, especially if they're like diesel fueled or diesel engines. Um, and if they're doing work and they need to run a power from these trucks, um, they're probably going to have to be idling. But like I said, they will be keeping it down to a minimum and shutting off vehicles, uh, you know, as necessary. Um, I did talk about the restoration of the trenches earlier, and Earl will have a portable restroom on site, we believe, up near, um, it's near one of the parking lots that's adjacent to 10 Bank Street, I believe. Regarding project communication and notifications, um, we will be sending out weekly um, updates uh, at the onset of the project and then probably divert back to a, a biweekly notification. Um, obviously, if there's major changes in the work, we'll be sending out uh, a notification. Um, if there is a cancellation of work, we will send out a, a brief informal email and try to do that at least 24 hours in advance. Um, and if we are adapting our parking accommodations, we'll send out notifications um, uh, on that as well. We do have a new um, website, the municipality as a whole, and we have updated and have been updating the Bank Street Improvement Project webpage. Um, the construction plans are on the website. Uh, there's a lot of relevant documents for many years leading up to this point. Um, we also encourage uh, all the residents in Princeton to uh, use the new webpage or website and use it to sign up for emails or text messages, uh, whatever works for you. Um, if you're already on the email list, we're just gonna continue doing that. But um, moving forward, if, if you're not already receiving emails, we definitely recommend um, signing up for the notifications on the website. And of course you could always modify, if you're receiving too many notifications, you can also turn them off temporarily. This is the standard uh, contact information list that is at the tail end of many of our, well, all of our construction updates and notices, um, but it's here for you as well. And at this point that One thing to, nope. Ian, I was gonna say, if you go back to that slide. Yes. One thing you can note is that um, our mobile numbers are listed on the slide. Uh, the engineering department is, well, the municipality as a whole, uh, we're 
we've split our staff up uh, by about 50%. So we don't necessarily always have somebody in the office to respond to a phone call to our office lines. That's why we're giving you our mobile numbers so that you can reach us directly, um, either by email or telephone or text. And that concludes this portion of the presentation. Um, there's definitely been some Q&A going on in the background. Um, bear with me as I adjust my screen. Let's see. So it looks like Tiffany's answered a few. Um, can you just, stop the share, Ian? Sorry to interrupt oh, I can. you. Absolutely. That, that way they can see all our faces and we can also bring people in if they raise their hands. How's that? Good. All right. So we do have a few um, questions that are still open. So I'm just going to go uh, starting with the first one from Michael Flower. Uh, he asked if it will be too noisy to work from home via Zoom during the first two phases of work. Um, they will not be, the contractor will not be working on the entire site at any given moment. They will be working in small sections. So if they are directly in front of your home, it can be a little loud. They're not driving sheet piles. They're, they're running excavators and um, it, it shouldn't be terribly noisy, but it will have normal construction noise. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say, I don't know if, um, you know, Michael was home during the New Jersey American work, but it'll be very similar to that. Last year, it's basically the same kind of equipment. Uh, if that was too noisy, I would guess that we will probably be the same, unfortunately, um, but it should be, you know, your backup alarms, um, yeah, camera here and there, but not all day, you know, some things like that, not, you know. I would say it is not too noisy, but at the same time, if your whole day is on Zoom, of course, that's going to get annoying. You know, I can imagine. I was going to say, Bill, that I would say that it would probably be noisy. Um, the homes are, you know, five feet from the roadway. So um, it, it very well may be noisy. Um, I don't know if there's any accommodations we might be able to provide, but we can check into that if it is um, a need for the neighborhood. The next question is from Natasha H. I am seconding the question from Monica Smith. How can we not replant more than two trees on Bank Street? When we moved there in 2007, there, was, there were 10 trees. Many have been removed, including two in front of the gun building. This represents a 70 to 80% reduction in trees with negative implications for both our street and the natural world. How was this determined? What public input was taken? So I can jump on that one, Ian. Okay. Um, so yes, we had what, five, six, seven years of public meetings with the neighborhood discussing uh, various parts of the design and unfortunately there is just a not a not a lot of space in this corridor uh, when you start looking at underground utilities overhead utilities uh, the need to move people along sidewalks um, it it's very challenging oh looks like mark who, who's the mark to shield that's me. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so it, it, it is a very challenging area. Um, I w would say that um, Taylor, potentially, as we're doing construction, if we identify an area where we think additional trees might be possible, we could look into that. Um, Otherwise, I know in some of the past meetings, we talked about um, planters that could be placed um, most likely on private property because the, pri the public property ends basically at everybody's front steps. Um, 
that maybe there's the possibility of looking at some type of a planter that could sustain um, a smaller type tree. Um, and what do you think, Taylor? Can we look into something like that? Sure, we can look into something like that. Um, just to reiterate the, the need to keep all the sidewalks ADA compliant and just as you can see, the, sh the trees that are there now, they're just surrounded by concrete in order to keep that ADA compliance and they're all dying from the top down, the ones planted on Nassau or on Bank Street. Um, so in order to keep the sidewalks the width that we need for wheelchair accessibility and so on and so forth, um, there's just really is not a, a lot of space for, for these trees to be planted in the municipal right of way. Our next question is from Adam. Um, will the access to lot 52 behind 24 Nassau be impacted during sidewalk replacement on Nassau Street? Um, short answer is yes, um, for a brief time while they're pouring and allowing the concrete to pour. Um, you're, we're talking what one or two days, Bill, at the most. Is it uh, something cars have to pass over, I assume? It's a driveway? Yeah. Yes. Three days. 72 hours is the, the typical. Okay. Um, so potentially we could look at doing that on say a Friday, Thursday or Friday. So it's limited impact maybe. Yeah, I'm sure that could be arranged. Uh, okay. There's no reason we can't stage it in that way. Obviously there's gonna be um, some of that staging required with some of the business entrances and things like that. Hey, you know, you're almost gonna have to create a maze coned off kind of to get people, you know, to the front doors on Nassau. So you know that'll come into consideration once we get to that point you know we'll be knocking on doors notifying whoever we need to business owners of hey these are the days where you're going to see something affected you know you have regular customers <laughs> try and educate them to what's going to be going on but you know if it's a different kind of business or whatever um you know we'll do, do the best we can obviously we know everyone needs to stay open um, as work goes on so uh bill uh will you be at least maybe providing ramps so that they could walk over if it's a concrete. Course. Yeah, I mean, I don't whatever it takes. I, you know, as long as it's not going to damage whatever we're pouring. Yeah. Okay. And no problem. We can have some plywood on site. Things. That's what I would assume. You know, four by eight piece of plywood or something like that. Uh, be the best bet. Okay. Um, M. Smith asked a question about the electricity poles and uh, the cabling staying as is cabling uh, cabling cabling staying as is yep. and uh will some of it be cleaned up at least um it is staying as is for the most part um it would be up to the utility companies that own the poles and the wires uh to clean up uh any of the wires that are currently residing on those telephone or utility poles and I think they did some of that work a few years ago. We'll contact them again um, to see what they can do to clean it up more. I'm sure they still have some extraneous wiring that's in there. And, and so we'll see what we can do to get that cleaned up. Um, one attendee asked, have we tried requesting access to lot 52 from the university? We have, um, they do utilize that parking lot. Um, I guess a lot of the businesses utilize that parking lot. Um, and we were kind of like turned down, I guess. <laughs> yep. Politely, you, of course. Usually with the, the universities, um, answer is that they utilize their parking lots 24 hours a day whether it's daytime shifts or nighttime shifts so so I think we tried during the New Jersey American Water Project to utilize their parking lots and it, it's still the same answer unfortunately. They also stated it was there was a liability they didn't want to be liable um, for anyone's vehicle uh, as well if something were to happen. The next qu question is from Stacy White. I'm at 10 Nassau Street. If the porta potty is in my parking lot, how often will it be cleaned? 
bill. Uh, I, I mean, there's, there is state regulations on how often it needs to be cleaned. Um, and bill can I know, think schedule they service them one to two weeks or so, either one or every other week. I'm not and it's, it's all a function of how many workers are using it as well. Yeah, we, we can clarify and request that it's clean at least once a week. I, I don't remember exactly where we said we we're going to put it. Um, I think yeah. it's coming out Monday morning. Um, we don't necessarily want to put it. It's not going to be like in the middle of anyone's parking lot, but no. and that, you know, uh, still going to be unsightly for the time being, and we don't want it to be a sanitary problem. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I can, I'm sure we can arrange to have a clean once a week is a short answer. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just quickly on that, uh, Bill, do you propose um, locking it over the weekend um, or on days that you're not there? We could put a dummy lock on it. That's fine. I mean, just a little padlock or something like that. That's fine. The superintendent okay. can keep that. Uh, we have a question from Diego Salmon. Will the sidewalk be replaced all the way up to the porches slash gates? Yes. That's an easy yeah. one. So if you want the detailed answer, we're going to cut the concrete sidewalk in front of your first step onto your stairs so that we do not touch your stairs whatsoever. And then we'll go around the stairs to the front of your foundation. So basically anything that's in concrete right now or some version of an impervious surface because there's so many repairs out there that will be replaced with concrete. Um, on that real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. would it, would it make, is there a pattern? There's no pattern on the bank street sidewalk, correct? It's all correct. It'll just colored. be the four by four square. I'm guessing it's going to make sense. And obviously what plans out in the field to try and cut joints right in between or somewhere in the middle of everyone's step, steps and everything so that they have access and don't necessarily need a piece of plywood. I uh, will work with Rich and Tiffany, I guess, in the field on, you know, what looks, you know, obviously we're not going to put a joint a foot from the last joint or something like that, but maybe working back from some of the steps to do the best we can to lay out those joints so that we don't need to put a piece of plywood and have someone have to, you know, do some trapeze over uh, wet concrete to get into their home at night. So just to just throw that out there for everyone to consider one more, uh, amongst the inspectors for one more out there. The next question is from Stacy White. Um, I'm at 10 Nassau Street. If Bank Street is being torn up and Nassau Street sidewalk is being torn up at the same time, how do I and our clients and agents access our building. Um, they are, they're gonna be sequentially torn up. It's not gonna be concurrent. Um, the schedule from Earl indicates that they're gonna do the Nassau Street sidewalks first and then do the sidewalks on Bank Street. I assume that's kind of relating to how we have concrete on Nassau going the same time as drain. I don't mean to cut you off, but just no, no. Uh, na concrete on Nassau, drainage on um, Bank Street. The drainage on Bank Street really only gets like to that parking lot, give or take. I'm mean, Obviously, those are the businesses I think we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, when that's going on, and even the sanitary, this is a slightly off subject, but I think we're going to be able to provide access to that specific parking lot and the back of that building, I guess, maybe possibly both of those, depending on, unless, except when we get right to that sanitary manhole. Um, obviously it will be a hard closure and we're gonna, you're gonna have to like get in touch with the guys to get back there. Uh, but there's no work until we start concrete on Bank Street from that last sanitary manhole near the parking lot for the building on Nassau. And you can chime in with whatever number building that is. Um, until we start concrete on Bank Street, like I'm saying. Right. And then in terms of the concrete on Nassau Street, you may, correct me if I'm wrong, you may do, say, the portion that's closer to the curb first, and then, or closer to the building first, um, and then 
then switch and do the area closer to the curb. You're, you're going to have to phase it somehow to keep pedestrians moving through we'll there. Work in any direction. So if, if the drainage happens to be right behind the building and impeding access from the rear of the building, we'll start the concrete, uh, you know, closer to, was that like the state highway up at mm -hmm. I don't know which yep. six um, up there? Um, so we're kind of keeping the middle area open um, near the buildings on the corner. If we happen to be just starting the drainage then because the schedule gets a little shifted, maybe then, yes, we work right from the corner of Bank and Nassau and then work up towards 206. Uh, but yeah, it, it's all going to have to be thought about because there's a lot of access required. So. Yeah. And then you'll have the ramps to the front doors if, if that's their only access point. Correct. Okay. The next question is from Diego Satman. Uh, without the trees, the cables will be even more visible. Is there a plan to remove any unused cables? We kind of answered that question already. Um, the next question is from Gene and Chip Kreider. If we park at Trinity Church parking lot and don't need to use our car the next day, may we stay overnight or until the car is needed? Uh, we are working on getting a clarification on that from Trinity. Um, there's the potential that they might not mind that at all. Um, but we will figure that out and put it in the um, in a notice once we have that all settled with Trinity. The next question is from Peter Shern. I know he raised his hand earlier. I don't know if he wants to raise his hand again. Um, is it the plan to replace only the existing sidewalk footprint? The yes, it's it's roughly staying in the same exact spot. Um, the curb might shift ever so slightly, but it's pretty much staying in the same spot. And if it's concrete now, we're replacing the concrete. Correct. Um, Natasha asked, we do, we do really need to do a little better on the trees separately. I'd like to know what kind of trees will be planted, which was also my question to the arborist. Many thanks. So <clears throat> on the plan right now, it's a European fastigiate hornbeam. Uh, those two trees uh, were selected for a number of different reasons. Uh, due to the tight quarters uh, between the adjacent parking lot, sidewalk, and then obviously Bank Street itself, I wanted to select a tree that could grow in those tight conditions. Going back to the ADA compliant of the sidewalks, there's not a lot of space for a large tree. So I wanted to do a medium-sized tree that is good for tight spaces, that is also pollution and urban tolerant as well. So though it's not native, it does support the local wildlife with their fruit and their seedlings. Um, it's also disease, insect resistant, very minimal pruning once it gets established. And then though it's a medium sized tree, uh, it can get up to 40, 50 feet tall with a max spread of 20 to 30 feet, but they do stay very fastidious, very columnar. So I don't anticipate future problems with the larger UPS trucks driving down the street and like I said, they're really surrounded by pavement between not only the street, the sidewalk for ADA compliance, and then the adjacent parking lot. So I wanted to get a, a, a tree that will fit in those tight quarters. Thank you, Taylor. Um, the next question is from Peter Shern. 14 Nassau Street has a dumpster pickup scheduled on Wednesdays. How will this be addressed? Um, it's going to be tight. We're trying not to let vehicles, especially the large garbage trucks down, down Bank Street, um, because inevitably they're going to have to back up. Um, it might be a little tight to have them K-turn and go back out against the, the one way to Nassau Street. Um, but we're going to have to work with the, the provider probably in the field to figure out what works best for everyone. Yeah, Peter, if you can give us additional information, work with Tiffany and Rich as to the time of day and the provider. Um, 
you know, it, maybe it's possible that they shift their pickup time to first thing in the morning or last thing in the day. Um, Vaguely I think, remember seeing like Republic services might be the yes, provider. It, were, it was Republic. And I know in 2019, uh, we did have state trooper and also police out there on a daily. So we had someone um you know, on the lookout on Nassau Street while the truck may be backing up or exiting out of Nassau. Um, we're not going to have that this time. So we don't want to, uh, we don't want to put that, <laughs> we don't want to put anyone at risk doing that. So um, Peter, yeah, we'll work with you perhaps maybe if they come earlier before 8 a.m. Uh, to pick up the trash or uh, after four or 5 p.m. We are, we did request that with uh, Central Jersey Waste or Solterra, as well as the Mercer County Improvement Authority with recycling. Um, you know, hopefully they can work with us <laughs> on those times. Um, so if you don't see your garbage or recycling not picked up first thing in the morning, please don't fret. It, may be picked up later on in the evening. Let's see. The next question is from Jean and Chip. It's a very similar question that was answered earlier uh, about the concrete work around the wood steps and stringers. Will there be any elevation changes um, that we need to address? No. So, no. <laughs> no. The goal is, is is literally to have the concrete sidewalk at the stairs exactly at the same elevation. We may make, make some changes on either side of that, but um, we don't want to do anything that could be a negative impact to, um, you know, the, the, the height, the vertical rises um, in front of the stairs. Right. Natasha has two questions back to back. Lot 54, you might usefully try again because that is an event space and there are no events going on during COVID. I'm not sure what lot 54 is. Is that the Princeton University lot? Yep. Okay. So we'll try, we'll reach back out to Princeton University um, and see if they have a different answer this time around. Um, the American Water Company was pre-COVID and there were more events then. Mm -hmm. So like I said, we'll reach back out to them. Uh, Bill Gray um, typed in the next question. Curb is granite, driveway aprons are concrete. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Um, except for after the turn, I think. After the turn in between the turn and Chamber Street intersection, the concrete curb, it's concrete curb, so. And concrete uh, sidewalk. Right, <laughs> yep. yep. Um, what about this, the next question from Peter Shern, what about the two sections of blacktop between 14 Nassau Street building and the existing sidewalk? Uh, They're talking about 20 Nassau. Right. Uh, you want me to jump on that one? Yeah, uh, I believe. I think we were talking with Peter about the potential of putting in grass, potentially, or, or stone, or just filling it in. I, I don't know what if that was ever settled. Oh, you're talking about where the trees are at. Yeah. Okay. If it's if it's the question about 20 Nassau. Um, where the driveway comes out by 13 Bank Street. We are coordinating with that development. We are monitoring it as it goes through the zoning board. And um, depending on the decision that's made there, if it is approved to move ahead, we will coordinate with them so that um, work on the Bank Street side hopefully can be completed um in advance of our project so that there is no impact to our new improvements 
the oh. next question. Oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going into the next question. Is it about the next question or mm -mm. the last one? Okay. Um, currently, there's a double driveway between 25 and 27 Bank Street, but there's a dividing hump between the two driveways. Can that hump please be removed? It makes turning out of 27 Bank Street driveway more difficult at times. Yep. Um, I believe you're talking about the dividing hump at the curb line, I believe. So, yes. Yeah. Um, we'll also be making that same change. Um, there's another one somewhere. Right. After you go around the dog leg towards. Um, In between the university parking lot and 35. 37. Yep. Bill Gray asked, is the curb along the gun building ADA compliant? Um, he meant the sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, cross slope wise, the challenge in your neighborhood is that your sidewalks are narrow. Your roadway is narrow. Everything is narrow. We are keeping curb where the curb is. So the slopes will be compliant as best as we can make them. Um, and the widths are what the widths are. This is a process when we were going through with state historic preservation. Um, I think there was a, just an understanding that we are going to make them as compliant as possible. The next question is also from Bill Gray. I meant the slide. Okay. Um, next question is from an attendee. Which tree are you planting again for the tight quarter area? Just missed it. Um, it's a Europe, uh, it's columnar European hornbeam. Yeah, I get that right? Another European hornbeam. And then on Bank Street, they're, I'm sorry, on Nassau Street, they're Princeton elms. Uh, Princeton elms are planted on Nassau Street. Yeah. And they, they go along with the master plan um, of the Nassau streetscape. So, um, and in regards to the caliper of trees, um, all trees planted within, um, on the municipal contracts are the two and a half to three inch caliper. So um, the, the height of them is probably gonna be around that 10 to 12 feet high when they're installed roughly. Uh, but all of the planting contracts, not just on this contract, but for any of the townwide planting contracts that I do, they're typically the two and a half to three inch caliper unless otherwise noted on a spec. Um, thank you, Taylor. The last question is, will this recording be posted? Um, yes, it will be. Um, this recording will be posted to the website. Uh, if not, we should be able to get it up tomorrow. Sometimes it takes a little, little time because it's a large file, but yes, it will be posted. Um, we also, I think, have a YouTube channel for the municipality. Exactly. Where That's, it may so also, is that where it's posted? It's going to be we have to upload it to YouTube and then we will provide a link to it on our web page. Uh, you could also search for it on YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, it'll be in both locations. Um, also, this presentation will be posted and we put up the, I, I mentioned earlier, we put up the construction plans on the website as well. The next question is for you, Taylor. Um, won't that be an issue for the low branches? Uh, I don't anticipate it based off the size of the tree print and how they'll be spreading and how they grow. I don't anticipate that. Bill Gray asked regarding the ADA compliance with sidewalks, if gun sidewalk is not compliant, but okay with the state, can it be argued that we can plant trees with the existing historic width of the sidewalks for the rest of the street? Again, it's not just the sidewalk width, it's also the utilities that are underground. Um, so and above. And above, yes. So we'll, we, we will monitor it during construction and evaluate if any additions might be possible. 
Um, just, Ian, just so you know, we also, Tony has his hand raised, um, but let's do Natasha's question. And yeah, then... I'm gonna share my screen one more time. Okay. Sorry. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Natasha, if you had any specific questions, but I'll leave this up. Um, and I guess we can uh, allow, who had the question? Tony. Tony, um, yep. We're going to let him in, allow him to talk. And Tony, you come in muted, so you might have to unmute yourself. There you go. You can go ahead, Tony. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, thank you guys for doing this. It was, uh, you know, extremely informative. Uh, you know, really, it really helped a lot to begin to understand it. Um, and, and let me just kind of tick down my list from the start. Uh, today, we finished the connection of the sewer line on 11 Bank Street. Uh, that got inspected. And so now we have it out to the curb edge. So we finished that. And I assume that, you know, that will simply be tied in. And once it's tied in, we'll redo the plumbing in the house. But we finished that today. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people concerned about the tree removal that, you know, so many have been removed and, you know, just two are being replaced. Um, and that obviously is going to continue to be an issue. And but particularly um, today, they trim trees, I think, on 10 Bank Street uh, on the corner there. And then the, uh, the Comcast guys just left. They just hung more wires um, on the poles. And what is so disturbing, and I think when you take the trees down, particularly as you move down the street, you're going to see there's some places where there's just like whole rolls of wire hanging in the air. And some places it's just this frizzy pile of stuff. And, you know, I, I know that's their purview, but is there, you know, can we be, you know, since the trees are going to go away, all that stuff is going to be exposed. Everybody's talking about that. And I think once it's done, it's going to be a big eyesore. The question is, can there be more pressure put on those guys not to leave those big rolls of wire hanging in the air or all of that extra frizzy wire, which is up there? I mean, th that's something that, you know, it, it, it's going to get worse, you know, once the trees come down. So, I mean, I, I would really like if you guys could, you know, put the pressure on those guys to be able to to do that because I don't think us putting pressure on them is actually going to help in any way, uh, shape or form. Uh, so just that as, as, as said, because I guarantee you, you'll start to, you'll get continually more complaints as the trees come down, but be that as it may. Uh, what do you do with the overnight parking? I think Gene raised it. Uh, I have an overnight parking uh, permit um, on the, for the street itself. Um, you know, but right now they've been very lax about it. We've been able to leave the cars there and the town is talking about, you know, uh, resident parking on the street for sure. But the same question is if, you know, I don't use my car, I'm teaching from home, uh, virtual. And if my car has got to be parked in one of the parking lots, can it simply stay there, you know, until I need it? And I think that that needs to be clarified. That needs to be clarified with, uh, with a whole, with a whole, with a whole bunch of us. Um, Ian, is it possible to go back to the plan itself? And I, there was some things alluded to about the gun. I think Peter asked it and, you know, we've talked about it several times. Could you go back to the actual plan itself uh, on the uh, adjacent to the gun site where the two trees are going to be planted? Yeah, see those two little green spots which are there. Um, mm -hmm. There is asphalt between the curb and the fence and there is asphalt uh, further up as you approach Nassau Street between the sidewalk and the building. And it's just really unsightly. So the question is, can that just be concreted in? By the uh, building, yes. Between yes. the- uh, like Sometimes, Deanna, it's only like, you know, six or seven inches. Right. Black top. Right. Between, yeah, between the tree and Nassau Street, yes, we are looking to put that back in as concrete. Uh -huh. um, the question came up between the two trees. That's right. If um, we wanted to leave that as a landscaping area for shrubs between the two trees or um, some other material, I think 
Ian and Tiffany were going to reach out to the guns to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Um, But it would be, it would either be concrete or landscaping at this landscaping in some form now just for you guys to know you know we're going through the whole issue uh, with the hotel Mm -hmm. and at some point in the past about a year and a half or two years ago um we asked the 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 owners of the building at that point to plant two trees in their backyard to screen our house from you know that alleyway in the back Mm -hmm. there are two trees back there which are about a year and a half old which I'd be more than willing to donate to the town if they want them. They're in the, um, they're in that driveway area. Yeah. In the back, right against the fence. There's two of them. We just planted. And okay. we, had an, we had an arborist come and look at it. And I'm quite, unfortunately, I can't tell you the species of the trees, but they're there. Um, and the question is, is, you know, they're going to, they're going to rip them out. And the question is they could be dug out and transplanted if, if, you know, if the town wanted them, that's, it's just, uh, or else they're just, you know, they're 2000 bucks for the trees are just going to be, you know, ripped out. Right. Okay. We'll okay. check on that. Thank you. Yeah. That, I, if you could do that, that would be good. And particularly that piece along, uh, all the way along the street, up to the gun quarter to eliminate as much of that asphalt as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the, the, I'm going to add a couple of other things that I'm just wondering about is, um, is there a possibility and if you walked in front of the sidewalk in front of my house, you know, I scored it off in paint uh, to get it rather than the standard four foot, four foot, four foot block. If we could actually do some additional scoring to be able to break the scale of it down a little bit more. Tony, I knew you were going to ask that question. Well, that, Deanna, that Deanna sure did call that one. I'm sure <laughs> then you've got a, an appropriate answer for me. We, well, we would need to check in with historic preservation of course, and with our contractor um, to see what might be involved. So are you talking about what I posed to Ian and Tiffany today? Are you thinking like a four by four and then two, two by twos and then another four by four? That would be perfect. Anything, Deanna, to give it some you know, some additional texture. Right. Anything to give it some additional texture because people, as you know, look down at a 15 degree angle. So sidewalks become really, really important a part of that. Mm-hmm. It would just be nice uh, to be able to have more pressure below as opposed to, you know, not wanting to people look up because I think when they look up, it's going to be a horror story. But, you know, be that, you know, be that one as it, be that as it may. But it'd be great if, if you guys could at least consider um, doing that, which I think would be, uh, which would be great. And then, you know, putting as much pressure as you possibly can. Now, let me ask another really strange question. In Europe, there are trees planted in the street between parking spaces. Mm-hmm. Standard park, and you know that the standard, they're, they're all over the place. Could that be a way of doing it? Because I don't think there's anything, I don't know how close it is to the curb, but there seems to be some space between the curb and the sidewalk and, you know, the curb and the sidewalk itself, or it's just, the infrastructure underneath there make that impossible as well because it would leave the sidewalks free but it would just take a very small amount of space in between which is in a di- kind of a diagonal yeah you've got on the eastern line a uh, curb line so on your side of the street we've mm-hmm. got the communication duck banked as well as the gas line yeah and then on um, the western side is where the water line is at. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, if anything, it, it would be the sidewalk area. And we'll just have to take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Because it would just be nice to break it. And I think, you know, once you, are you guys going to take the trees down uh, soon? When are you taking the trees down? Yeah, Bill, Man, which- yeah, n- not until the concrete work is getting ready to start. I mean, uh, so probably two months or so. Oh, I see. So they'll be in full full bloom at, before you guys before you guys uh, start taking the trees down. Ooh, okay. Well, that'll be a shock. Anyway, yeah. okay. Yeah, right uh, where he's pointing there. Yeah, before the concrete on Nassau starts, so mid March. Well, the trees will the trees will start it will st- trees will start coming down. Well, I'd appreciate it if you could look for any other spaces where that could possibly happen would be good. The scoring would be good. And, um, and of course, it seems to me that you've answered everything else. And if we can figure out how to deal with this overnight parking thing, 
Um, yeah. That would be the other. That would be the other issue. But we're very. You know, I think everybody's very happy. This thing is finally moving ahead. But you know, you know, we didn't get the wires underground. We didn't get the. Uh, we didn't get the. Uh, the lighting fixtures. Uh, by the way, what is happening with the lighting fixtures? Are we still having the existing cobra heads? Um, I actually need to reach out to them because I do understand. I think that you have two street lights out on yeah. Bank Street at yeah. closer to Nassau and then closer to the dog leg. Yeah. Uh, so let me reach out to them because if they do need to go in and do some replacements, um, we can see if there's options. Oh, that would be if you could explore any level of options it would would yeah. obviously be great. But you know, I'll tell you that planting the two trees where they are on the street itself, and I don't mean to be completely selfish about this, but um, if cars are coming up University Place, literally their lights shine directly on the side of 11 Bank Street. We've got complaints from the neighbors going, my God, where's that light coming from on 11 Bank Street? Well, part of it's coming from the parking lot, but a good amount of it is coming from cars coming up um, University Place. The two trees uh, will significantly help <laughs> break that uh, that light line. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Okay. Um, Tony, I did want to address your parking um, concerns. I did, we did bring that up with Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, at the parking meters, you know, if you wanted to stay there pretty much all week and you move your car in the morning i mean sorry on the weekends that is fine okay. um as far as trinity church we did let them know that you know there may be cars that would like to stay overnight uh for okay. a few days as you know people are working from home um it didn't seem to be an op uh I'm sorry, a problem. So uh, we're just confirming that and then we'll put it in writing and send it out to everyone. Okay, so, and that will be part of that, uh, that uh, parking uh, um, placard that we have to get from you with name, address and all the rest of that stuff on it. Yes, right. and um, uh, based depending on, well, depending on residents, however you feel um, we can, hand deliver the parking placards or you if you don't feel comfortable with that you may pick them up at the police entrance at one valley road of our okay. municipal building okay um so if just email me and let me know or you can call our office and let me know if you don't have an email i know there are a few elderly residents who I have been in contact with already that for one don't have e email or internet so I've already spoken with them and we will be giving them you know this presentation so that they can read it and look at it and let us know what questions they do have so we are aware of those people good okay all right yeah. well I appreciate it thank you very much thank you Tony yeah if there's and if anybody knows of any other residents, um, you know, that that may not be English speaking that needs a translation, I think we mentioned that, let us know that as well. Um, and we'll endeavor to get translations completed for those residents too. I was just going to say, it might sound stupid, but um, so long as Trinity knows their first call is, hey, the police, or hey, it's it's not a towing company, you know, I'm sure they're they're obviously willing to work with you enough to give you these spaces from eight to six. I'm sure they're willing to work with you enough to say, hey, we're not going to tow your car before letting everyone know that's what our intent is, because they hit their tipping point for one reason or another. So, right. you know, I just to try and quell some of that you know, worry, I would, I would think they're on board with the whole plan in general. And, and there was a question in the Q&A. If you have a driveway mm -hmm. and you want to leave your car in the driveway during construction hours, you do have that option. Just please keep in mind that if you need to leave during construction and there's a hole in the middle of the road, you will there you won't be able to um so just keep that in mind if there's something that you know you need to do during the day and you have to leave in your car maybe you park overnight at the lot but if you know you aren't going to be leaving your home and you want to stay in your driveway you can do so okay 
Okay. Get a couple more pop in. Right. Um, Natasha, her comment was about taking the trees down, I guess, specifically when we're taking them down. Um, I guess the gist, the, the short end of it is she would rather us take it down earlier before birds are nesting and as Tony pointed out, before they're blooming. So we'll work with the contractor to see if we can bump that up and do that sooner. And of course, work with the arbor arborist as well. Yeah, that, that's fine with us. I defer to Taylor, whatever, you know, or, or you guys, whoever wants to take the lead, but we, we can do either or, it doesn't matter. We just, I don't know, we're thinking leave them up as long as possible. But. Okay. All right, well, it looks like we've gotten through all the questions and no hands are up and I think our attendees are dropping off. Yep. <laughs> So with that, I think we can adjourn the meeting. Mark, do you have any closing comments for us? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. No, first of all, thank you all to everybody on staff and the contractor for making time to have an evening meeting. I appreciate that. And thanks to everybody in the neighborhood that, that uh, joined and asked questions. It's always good to make sure we communicate with each other. So everybody have a good night. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mark.